person of the Trinity. This second person of the Trinity has two natures now, but in both incarnations, human and divine. Yes, this human nature remains with him for eternity. Are you aware of that? So, sorry, the, human, the, sorry. the human nature, yeah. post incarnation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stays with him forever. So, even in his former state, okay. now at his present moment, he has how many natures? Okay, but after the re resurrection, he became divine. So, I wouldn't say. No, 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 no. He was always divine. What do you mean he became divine? So, so I wouldn't say. I'm, I'm helping you out no, now. No, no, but I would He was always divine. He never stopped being divine. Okay. Okay, he took on additional nature. So he was never human before. No, because right? the, the he was is, never. Listen, his listen. nature had changed. That's why when he came, as finally, no, 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 no. But listen to what I'm saying. I was about to highlight. No, because you were denying that. What, no, when he, well, like, in terms of his, when I say his nature, changed, his humanity. Changed. Speak your mind. Because speak your mind. when he came to the disciples, he came through the door without even opening the door. So his humanity had changed. So it would have been a divine nature. Human. So are you telling me it's not that he was still because how can if he was still human? So when when he came to a priest with his disciples and he ate bread with them, they said he came through the door without opening the door. Yeah, but God said so that he all power was given unto yeah. Jesus. So what I'm saying so to you, can a normal human body walk through a closed door? No, no. So what I'm saying is, his I think you're mis I think you're misunderstood. Yeah. I didn't ask you about the body at all. I asked you about the nature. Yes. Okay. So what is the humanity Did nature? Does the human nature of Jesus leave him what? at crucifixion? I don't know what kind yeah. of Christian you are, the human but if you were a mainstream Christian, yeah, are, you, are, are you a Protestant Catholic? No, I'm not Catholic. But no, what they, what they all say that. What, what I'm trying to say is that at the crucifixion, that so Jesus came. His humanity was displayed. Do you remember he shows his hand? Oh, yes. Post yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he have a human body? It was a body that appeared to be human. So what I, when I say this, is because he could walk through doors and stuff like that. Did he, eat food? Human... Did he eat food? Yes. Yes? Yes. Does, does the divine need but food? But his nature... Does the divine, his, does the divine his, his need food? Does the divine need food? Why did he ask? Why did he feel hungry and he's demanding food? Yeah, because he wanted to show them because that he's he human. Is, yeah, they wanted to, he wanted to show it was indeed resurrection. Bro, he's human. Post resurrection. He's human. Do humans walk through closed doors? Well, humans who have the power and ability might do. I don't know. I don't know paranormal. <laughs> so if he had a paranormal nature, it's the same thing. That's no, you're talking, look, you're talking about someone who has miraculous. Exactly, yeah, miraculous. Yes, so even <laughs> if I ask you, can a human raise someone from the dead? Yes. No, 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 no. I, I'm saying yes to your, in terms of your question, not no, no. as an answer. Because you see, one thing you need to understand is that Jesus wasn't just human, or just wasn't divine. Yes, post incarnation. This is a belief of all mainstream Christians yes. that they maintain this hypostatic union, yes, for eternity, post incarnation. I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you're not, I don't want you to speculate. I want you to go home, read it, and then come and talk to us. Yes? But the question remains, post-incarnation, how many natures are there in the Godhead? There's one divine nature. Yes, and? One divine nature. And? One divine nature. So there's no human nature at all? So you're well, going against the hypostatic union? union. Yes. The hypostatic union was when Jesus was on, on earth. So you would have to show me no, I don't think something you know. that says... I don't think you know your you doctrine of hypostatic union. So. Let, me, let me see if I can quickly okay. find it. Because the human side, yes. the human it's, aspect of the divinity, will always remain even post, post uh, resurrection so even now that he's ascended to heaven he would have the quality of the divine nature and the human nature because in the hypostatic union the because, human nature will always stay because, forever because that's the point example when we die and we are resurrected we will not have no we will have a heavenly body no, but yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So Jesus's nature, or the body that he would incorporate, would have not be the same as what we would consider humanity. That's why when we get resurrected, we will have a, a, a heavenly body. We wouldn't say we're just mortal. It's a different sense. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to. You keep talking about the body when I'm talking about the nature. Yeah, but that's yeah, but what I'm trying to say is, is the human nature what going is, to remain okay, with Jesus? What, or what is the human nature? The human Let's nature is what the human nature is. The human nature, for example, if you read, uh, what do you say? Uh, what is that word that they normally use? Uh, 
Uh, when, when, oh, I think it's um, second Polish or th Thessalon, where he lowered himself below the angels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he took on. So, so, as we see in John, the word became flesh. So that was Jesus' humanity. That is what the hypostatic union is. That the divine took on flesh. He had two natures. It's just like every human has a nature. It's like you wake up, you get hungry. You know, you desire fleshly things. You have a spiritual nature too. You understand? That's when you're in worship to God and you feel like very spiritual. So we all have two natures. So when Jesus came into the flesh, he had that was his humanity, his human nature. So when we die, Philippians, that's what yeah, Philippians, so if you look at Philippians 2 7, yes, where he emptied himself, yes, you will not find any other words in the Bible where this, this emptying himself has now been restored. That his emptying has been restored. Yes. So this human nature of his okay. will remain with him forever. Well, I think that's a, a false um, understanding. Uh, let me see if I can... Uh, I think you should re read up on how was that. I think so. Because yeah. the thing is, what yeah, you're, what you're no, talking no, about... You're talking, so you're talking about when he returns to heaven? No, post incarnation. Oh, sorry. So post incarnation, Earth, post resurrection. Yeah, post, this human yeah, post, nature of his will remain. Yeah, but that's what I'm you saying. Your peace. understanding is wrong. So the hypothetical union is when he was here, not when he goes back to heaven. You need to read about. You, you really need to read about. Then you, because you're saying something that's not yes. coherent with the definition of the, de the definition is when Jesus came on earth. He came in his humanity. So when Jesus, for example, said he doesn't know the hour or whatever, it doesn't mean when Jesus goes into heaven he's still going to say the same thing because his nature is not the same as when he was on earth. That's what I'm trying to clarify. It's not like when Jesus is in heaven he's going to need to go to the toilet or he's going to need to eat. Now yeah, once again talk about the boiler. Yes, but that's his humanity. I'm talking about, look, that's the human nature. Did Jesus acquire limitations what? when he became, when he acquired this human nature? Did yes. he acquire limitations? Yes. Okay. These limitations were so for you, with him. That means that will, those limitations will exist forever. That's why I'm saying it's a false understanding because those limitations won't exist. Forever. So you're telling me the li Jesus' human nature ended at resurrection. Jesus's or crucifixion rather. would have at, at least to be theologically correct would have been at least when he ascended. So you're saying his temporal nature, yes, yes, is something that is ending. When? So I, yes, and yeah, at least I think it would have been the <laughs> resurrection. But, no, but you're going um, according. You're going against no, mainstream. No, no, because listen, in his humanity, he didn't have all knowledge, all power. So that means Hashim's uh, thing of the hypostatic union means when he's back in heaven, these limitations are still going to apply. That's that's what that's not the Christian understanding. No, no. What I'm saying is that. This nature, the human yes. nature, does it leave him at all? Does it leave him? Does does it leave Jesus at all? Post incarnation. Uh, to accurately answer that, I would probably have to look into it. It doesn't leave him. No, no, it doesn't leave him because again, like I said, his limitations. That's why I ask you, what do you define as his his human? Nature? I mean, maybe maybe yeah. I'm not making sense in terms of what exactly this human nature is yeah. because I was under under yeah. the impression that. What is defined in Philippians 2 7 yes. is something which is his no, human nature. No, yeah, but that what's defined in Philippians 2 7 is not forever. It's not, okay. So, so, so when you going, say. Because he's not going to be below the angels. Okay. So, forever. You, so let, no, let so. me ask you this question again. Yeah. Whatever is defined as the human nature of Jesus, yeah. yes? Yeah. Which he acquired post incarnation, yeah. yes? Yeah. Will that nature come to an end? Yes. Yeah. When? Well, it would. I would. Don't speculate. Tell me when. Yeah, but you know. I, I would say the the latest would have been the ascension. But I would I place it to the resurrection when he came back in his glory, and he, he kind of then told the the apostles like when they started to believe in him and who he was, and he was doing more divine things like coming into the room without opening the door. It's not so. In Philippians, we see Jesus's nature was went below the, that of an angel. But when he goes back to heaven, he's not going to be below the angels, he's going to be above the angels. So that nature that was limited is not going to be limited permanently, which is what I thought, I believe, Hashim was alluding to. Okay, so you're saying the human nature, whatever it is defined as, will come to an end. 
Yes, I think you really should read up on how to send DMs. Okay. So I cannot find the references now. Yeah. But you should really read up on this yeah. because this is something which. So show me where it says that it will be forever, not just on Earth. That's the difficult. I'm try trying to dif to clarify that. This that, is the church's teaching. Yeah, but you. So if I were to, if I were to ask you. I, yeah, but we every, every Christian believes in the hypostatic union, which was while well, Jesus was present on Earth. They don't believe that there's going to be a hypostatic union when Jesus is back into heaven. That he's still limited, that he still doesn't know certain things. That he will be still less than the angels. No, he'll be above the angels. That's where I think your understanding of the hypostatic union is. Hypostatic union is just the two natures coming together. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But in heaven, it will be different. No, even in heaven. Okay, he's, let me ask you this. Yes. Why does it say Jesus is now? If you read, uh, for example, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 3 where this is post incarnation yes where Paul writes the head of Christ is God and also in 1 Corinthians 15 24 where he says he'll subject himself after he's conquered death and everything he subjects himself to God uh, what was the first one uh, 1 Corinthians 11 3 in fact that actually is proof that the hypostatic union is, is still in force even even when he's in heaven and also he's always subject to God Exactly. Uh, 11, 11, three. Yes. The and equal with God. You can read it aloud if you want. I really need to go now. Okay, yeah, we'll wrap, wrap it up. up yeah. yeah. But again, so if the head of Christ is God. Yes. That <laughs> that still does not um, What do you what do you understand by that? So in the whole, in the Trinity, yeah. you have something called the economic Trinity. Yes. So you have the Father, who would be like the will, the Son, who applies the will, and the Holy Spirit that also applies the will. So, so basically, so you have the Father. So, so according to the Church Fathers, yes. you have the uh, imminent Trinity and the economic Trinity. The imminent Trinity. You mean the ontological and the economic? Yes. So that they ontologically they're all the same. They have all the same uh, abilities, same attributes. Authority. That's, that's where it comes to the economic part. The economic oh, trinity. No. The economic trinity yes. is in the roles. Exactly. Yes. And yes. authority is not a role. Yes. And authority is where you are. It's your nature. Okay. No, so no, no, no. If I ask no, you, no, no, no. The will is the will is the one that starts the objective like if I want to move my leg it comes from my my will so the father is the will so the father is the authority yes is the will not is not that's why ontologically they are the same no they're not if you're saying the father has authority and trying then to uh, who's in charge of those roles yes but if you're trying to say there's a distinction in terms of divinity you'd be Kind of making the same claim as Jehovah's Witnesses no, who I'm not, I'm believe not, I'm there's not, a, a main God. The and, I'm talking yes. about this verse here. Yes. When he says, it doesn't say the head. Listen. Yes. It doesn't say the head of Christ is the Father. What is the term used there? The head of Christ is the authority. The head of Christ is what? The it father. says the head of Christ is God, not yes. Father. Yes. 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 Why does it not say Father? It says God yes. because Jesus, post incarnation. Yeah, but, Post resurrection yes. is still under the authority of God. Again, so if you're talking about the authority of God, yes, it's because God is like is the will. What do you mean God is a will? God is. Are you saying God, Are you saying Jesus did not have his own will? No. What I'm saying is, in the Trinity, they all have distinct roles. Do they have distinct wills? They have distinct wills. They have distinct. Do they have distinct consciousness? They have distinct will. They, they have, have distinct consciousness. They have distinct personalities. That's why we do say. Do they have distinct consciousness? Do, we, do they have distinct consciousness? Or is it one consciousness? It's one, three distinct personalities. No, that wasn't my question. They is have it, three is it one consciousness? They have three you know what You know what consciousness yes. means, right? Yes. Do they, they have one consciousness yes. or distinct consciousness? They would be distinct. Because they are... So it's three gods then? No. <laughs> no. Because they... You just, you just basically no. said they are three, three gods. Yeah. Because you're not... Un you're misunderstanding. Okay. Make so I didn't they have their own will. From that statement, you can say there's three gods. No, no, three, from no, but three distinct if, consciousness, if you, three yes. distinct wills, yes. okay. three distinct persons. Okay. Because you, we, in, in, we, because in, we are according to the church. You know, when you have in, distinct listen, consciousness, in the, distinct according wills. to the church, you have something called perichoresis, which is the Father is in the Son, the Son is in the Spirit, and the Spirit is in the Father. So, that, in. so I thought they were all distinct. 
You one, agree that what do you mean in? Let me explain. What do the Christians say? One oesis, three hypostatis. Yes. So when you have perichoresis, it's the same thing. That the father is in the son no, no, because when, it's the when one you say, nature. When you say one oesis, yes. that is basically the substance. Yes. 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 So when you... When, so when, when Jesus when says, three... I am in the father and... The, uh, says the Father, glorify me, so I can glorify you. And he said, and it, and you, nothing to be essence. Yes, but when you glorify someone, it's yes, nothing to be essence. There's, sta there's statements, for example, in terms of when Jesus is trying to. You mean I'm in the Father, and the Father in me? Yes. He also says the disciples are in, in, yes, in me. But this, is, but this is what he's trying to. <laughs> are you saying the disciples God's? also God? Because Jesus is making a statement to people who understand. So when Jesus speaks in parables, yes. he speaks them for a reason. So why bring parables when, okay, when the same did, parable is used for yes, the disciples? Because Jesus is trying to say the same way that the Father, the Son and the Spirit yes. are acting in accordance, he wants the disciples to be one in Christ. That's why he calls the church to be ah, one see, body. See what you've done now? Okay. Now you have done that they are one in purpose. But when it came to the Father and Son, you talked about essence. Because so why can't you accept when Jesus and the Father the are one, different... they're one in purpose and not in essence? Yes. Why do you accept that if it's just the Father and the disciples, you only accept it? Because if we if we argued that the Father, sorry, that Jesus and his disciples are one in essence, you would not accept that. In fact, if, that would be blasphemy. If yeah, the disciples right. and the Father so, are one. So, yes, yeah. Yeah. So, so we have we, to understand what did he mean by when he yes. was saying that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so if we say that God and Jesus are one, Yes. We can we can argue that they are one in purpose. But if you say that they're one in essence, then you have to then extend John 17 verse 21 where Jesus no, said, I am my disciples are one. If they are all God. And that's the same Greek if wording. They, as if well. they are all God and the Shema says, Here are Israel, your Lord God is one, we cannot distinguish them in any other way. If you're saying if they all are God, then you're a polytheist. If they all no, but you know what I'm trying to say. I know Just what you're... To, yes, as soon as you said yes. they have different... Distinct, all, yes, as soon as you said why? they have distinct consciousness, yes. that itself implies you're a polytheist. So, if you have a will, it means you have a consciousness. Yes. yes? Exactly. And if it's distinct, so, that means so you're... So, what I'm trying to say is that when I said they had three... They just, when I said they had distinct wills, yes. you jumped on when you, I said they had distinct consciousness. No, I asked you, do yes. they have different consciousness? But I'm saying, and you said they had distinct But I'm saying, if I said they had distinct wills, you should have made that statement then, because it's the same thing. Yes, sir. If so you, how do you if, see a distinction no, if, if they have will and No, no, you're right. Actually, no, no, he's right. If you're trying to tell us that they have distinct wills and distinct consciousness, then they are three different beings. No, because yes. if they communicate with each other, you have to have a distinct will. Because otherwise you're one. Because uh, the, the but, father, but if you're agreeing with me, if they, if they, if they okay. communicate, no, no, among you're agreeing with me. They, they you're you're saying they have distinct no. wills, and I'm agreeing with that. You're also saying they have distinct, distinct consciousness. I'm also agreeing with that. Yes. So, so what is the, the will and what, consciousness wait, is wait, the same thing? Yeah, exactly. Yes. My point. When you talk about someone who has got his own will and his own consciousness, that itself is one being. When you talk about three different beings having three different wills and three different consciousness is three different be beings which means you're talking about three different gods no. and they can't be one person you can do you can deny it but that's exactly what you're saying i'm sorry to say this okay. and i think with this we should wrap it up because next time if you come and study the hypostatic union i'm pretty the sure the union doesn't have to do with what uh, jesus is ever Jesus's uh, body, but Jesus's form in heaven. No, I'm talking about his nature. Yes. I'm talking about his nature. Yes. The nature of Jesus, because the you're, nature, you're the human nature will remain yes. with him you're, for you're, eternity. No, that's, that, that would be a heretical statement because what? Jesus, the hypostatic union means Jesus took on the form of humanity. He loaded himself beneath the angels. Therefore, you're saying if that is eternal, Jesus in heaven is still below the angels. Because no, nothing no, has no, no, I'm not saying how, how I, can it I said, look, I said, you're listen, listen. I said, regardless of how you define the human nature, yeah. yes? Do you believe Jesus has a human nature now? And what do you define as human nature? Regardless of how you define it. Yes, because we were, you Regardless of how you define it. Either you say he left his human nature when he resurrected, or you say the human nature is still, still there with you. Regardless of how you define it, that is not the question. The question to you is, yes, look, look, I, I am consistent. I'm saying his divine nature is with him and his human nature is with him. Who's, that's an incorrect who's, statement. Well, that's fine. That's what you have yes. to deny or accept. Yes, that's so, an incorrect statement. Let me ask you this question once again. Yes. Is Jesus' human nature still with him now? No. Good. So you do not believe in the hypostatic union being, uh, being uh, what, what is the oh. word? Eternal. 
I never made the claim it was eternal. No, but that's, you have to read up as to how the Christians actually believe no, this. Because I, as I said, because the hypostatic union took place when Jesus became flesh. So he lowered himself below the angels to become, to take on humanity. So when he resurrected, he so still wasn't he left. So you're saying that he left that nature yes. when he, when he, he ascended? After the, yes. So oh, this, no, no, it would have been after the resurrection. Wait a minute, which nature did he, did he actually uh, uh, reduce? The divine nature or the human nature? Well, he emptied himself of his, uh, his, his nature. Which nature? Well, good question. Which nature? Human or divine? He emptied himself of what? Of his, uh, some of his divine nature. Oh, well, Which means he's not fully God. No, because you're saying you're talking about When he was human. He was still fully God. No. Because wait, according wait, to the... Wait, 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 wait. There's no point. There's no point. Now let me tell you this. So according to the church, yes. or no, well, you have, like I said, you have this notion of called perichoresis, where the Father is in the Son, the Son is in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is in the Father. So even in Jesus' humanity, because when we go to Isaiah, uh, sorry, Deuteronomy 18, 18, and it talks about the prophet to come, that God will put his words into his mouth. So the, the Father, the presence of the Father, and the Holy Spirit was still within Christ. So this is what... I'm talking about Philippians 2. Yes. According to, according to Philippians 2, 7, did he become lower than the angels? So I don't yes. know. What became lower than the angels? Because that road is very bumpy. Which nation? Mine would be... Well, it would have been... Well, it been... You're in a pickle, bro. No, no, because you in are his in divine nature, he emptied himself of some of the it's things. Finished, so when he said he did not know the Father, that would be one of them. My friend, it's a very simple question. Yes. When he says when he became, became lower than the angels, yes. which nature wrong, became lower wrong. than the angels? <laughs> you can't be right. So it would have been his divine nature. So Thank you. Is not so fully when, God. Listen, listen. When the nature, you said nature doesn't change. Now he's saying nature changes even less than the angels. Really, really, you should go and read up on the Trinity. Because what you're doing is, these are multiple, uh, what do you say? Heresies, I would say, I don't know. Multiple heresies you're committing with. And you really have to be grounded in your understanding of apostolic union and the Trinity. Because what do you say? When you keep saying that nature doesn't change and now all of a sudden his nature has changed that change. below that of an angel even, yes. then it shows that you're, you're not talking about God, you're talking about someone who's a demigod. Someone who's not almighty God, but someone who's, a, who's someone less but, than God. Yes, yeah, so then you would have to understand. So in terms of Jesus knowing his humanity, divinity yes so jesus took on the is that form a change of, in nature jesus took so let me explain so jesus yeah, took on the form of humanity so then there were certain things that he was subjected to through the father because he spoke through the will of the father in jesus divine nature he would speak of his own will are you sure yes they, 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 they all agree shall i show you where that doesn't happen okay, when jesus on. says i've not come by my will yes by the will of the one who and, sent me. And I said to you, the economic trinity yeah. is that the Father is the will. So, what do you mean, do you so, mean by the will? So the, they all have their different roles within the trinity. No, no, what do you mean the Father is the will? What do you mean? So everything would emanate from the Father. Which means he gives so a the, command. The, the Father begat which the means, Son. Which means, he gives, the, which means he gives a command, right? Uh, yes. So who's in charge of the roles within the trinity? Who's in charge? Of the roles. In an economic trinity, who's in charge of the roles? What, what do you mean? Hierarchy. By, okay. Okay. Do you see a hierarchy within the authority within the Trinity? Are they, or they're all equal as one? They are all equal. In, in terms of authority, are they equal? Are you sure? In terms of the Father, the Father is like the will. No. In terms of authority, are they all co equal? The Father would be like the will. Are they all equal in the authority? The Father would be. I didn't be ask like, about the will, yeah, I asked about authority. If, ask. Yeah, but if I'm trying to. If, what is the will? The will is the initiator. Which means the command of God, right? Yeah. So who gives the command within the Trinity? The Father. Thank you. Which means he's, he's, he's the authority. He's the boss. That, that's what I said. Exactly. Said. <laughs> but yes, that's what I said. So when, he, when, when you have yeah. someone within. So in so terms of authority, the Father is the highest in authority within the Trinity. Because it says the head, the, 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 even the Holy Spirit, he will not speak of his own. Yes? He will only say what he hears. No, because so even but, no, so but, not equal, but the thing is, okay, it's not again, equal trinity. Let, me, let me give you an example from the scripture, <laughs> because because they all have this is from no, 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 because they give up, yeah, no. because your John 16 14 clearly no, 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 says no, 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 that no, the Holy Spirit no, no, will not speak no, no, of his no, no, own, he will no, only no, say what he hears. So the Holy Spirit doesn't even have the ability to speak, 
without the permission of his boss, i.e. God Almighty. Okay, and I'll, I'll, how does this constitute an equal uh, Godhead in this trinity? There's no co-equality. They're, they're not even equal, they're equal, and one's higher than the other. I, I said, that, that's why you have to understand the economic trinity. Okay, and so if, what is the yeah, economic, economic okay, means they hold, if they, Economic if, trinity if, means they yeah, have different roles. Exactly. But then I asked him, who's but, in charge of these roles? Okay. Who? God. Who's in charge of the roles? Yeah, so the, the father. So what you're saying is not something new to the church. No, no, I'm not saying it's new. If they, if they all have roles, it means they do something differently. So okay, let me ask you. Gonna be are they, the role of the father they is to be the will. Are they co-equal in their essence? Yes. In their nature? Yes. Okay. Is the father, is the father mortal or immortal? The father is mortal. I'm sorry, immortal. Is the second person of Trinity mortal or immortal? Immortal. Or who died on the cross? Both of them? No, 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 let him answer, let him answer. Who died on the cross? The son in his humanity. No. Which person died on the cross from the three? The son in his humanity. Was the son the second person of the Trinity? Yes. Good. Did the second person of Trinity die? The son in his humanity. You know when you use humanity? Yes. Remember I asked you earlier, your nature yes. and your person are linked? So the divine nature is immortal and the you, humanity was I'm immortal. explaining to you yes. what I what uh, what I, what it means when a person dies. Yes. yes. The nature, when you say in his humanity, the humanity is his nature. Yes? The nature is linked to what? Or to whom? The person. Okay? So when I asked you from the three, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, which person died? In his humanity. Carry on, carry on. In his humanity, the son. The second person of the Trinity. Yes. Yes? yes. Did the second person of the Trinity die in his humanity? Yes. Good. Did the first person of the Trinity die in his humanity? The first person, no. In, sorry, not in humanity. In any form? No. No. Did the second person of uh, uh, the Trinity die in his humanity? In his humanity? Yes. Yes. He's still the same person, right? Who died? It wasn't another person who died. Because that would be heresy of the Nestorians. Yes? Two persons, two natures. Yes? But we don't believe but that. You have do we? to understand what the nature is. So you no, have the, the divine nature is a My immortal. friend, I I specifically said in his humanity. Yes. So I'm already taking in account yes. the human nature. Yes. yes? But when I say the nature is linked to the person, you need to acknowledge that it is the second person of the Trinity who died. Even if you say in his humanity, yes. it is still that person who died. You see what I mean? Yes. It wasn't a different person. Yes? yes? yes when a person true. dies, yes. what do you call that person? Uh, mortal. Yeah, when someone dies, it's mortal. Yes. yes. Now, once again, let me ask you the question. Is the second person of the Trinity... Yeah, but your, your definition of immortal is flawed. Okay, I didn't even define immortal. He didn't define it. Yeah, but How do you know it is flawed? Yeah. Because... Did I... Did you did you ask me for the definition? No. Okay. So even before I defined it, you have already made a judgment. Okay. So, what is so why your, didn't you ask me? Okay, what is your definition? Okay, my of definition of immortality yes. is the separation of the soul from the body. Do you agree? The separation, but it means if God is sorry, sorry, not immortality, mortality. So, immortality is not dying. That is the definition of immortality. Someone who does not die. Okay. Okay. Do you agree with that definition? Immortal. Mortal means you can you can die. Yes. yes. Immortal means you cannot die. Cannot. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you the question again. But your, did did but the your, first person of the Trinity die? No. First person. Did the second person of the Trinity die? No. No. So who died? So no person died. In his humanity. Yeah, but he's still the same person, bro. Don't you understand? His, you keep his, him, that hypothetic union. Yes. For example, like when we spoke about photons having two natures yes. that coexist. Yes. The humanity of Jesus, which was just the flesh, yes. and the divine stayed intact. So the body died. The humanity, so the divine, did not die. How many persons the are there? In these two natures, how many persons are there? There's one person. And who is that person from the Trinity? Who's that person? The son. Yes. yes, the second person yes. of the Trinity. Yes, so which person died on the cross? Which person? From the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, who died? One of them or none of them? The Son in his humanity. Yes, one of them, right? Yes. That means he's a mortal. Thank you. That means what? That means he's a mortal. Immortal. Mortal. Mortal. Anyone who dies is a mortal. Remember? 
anyone who dies. Yeah. So by if definition, you, if they're all immortal beings, you know, you know what die. you're thinking. I think, wait, I think you're making the same mistake like many Christians make the mistake. Okay. You're thinking the natures are somehow in two different persons. The, the, wait, wait, wait. The divine didn't bro, bro, listen, listen. Yes. The two natures are linked to one person, not to two persons. And if it's two persons, there is a heresy of Nestorianism. Yes? So these two persons is a heresy. So, so the flesh, what you're believing the flesh wait, is wait, the wait, human, wait, 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 wait. When you talk about the flesh, yes. and when you talk about the divine, yes, these are the two natures you're talking about. But it's still linked to one person. Who is that one person? The second this person. This is why you have the hypostatic union, wait, wait, so yes, someone can die I, in the human I'm not denying, I'm yes. not sorry, denying the hypostatic union. If I may, you gave the example of the photons. Yes. And even in photons, when you, yes, they sometimes do have separate uh, you can either find their, their, their yeah. You can either yes. find their location or you can define their speed, but that doesn't make them different because it's the exact same one. Is that their it's one photon. ultra? But, their ultra but do they have two high. contradictory natures? The wave and the photon. Yes, they do. Yes. But they, that that that, no, that no. does not make them, they do. But they, that does not make them different atoms. I They're didn't still say the they same were, wave. Yeah, it's still the same light, basically. Yes. Yes. So in this case, it's still the same person. Even though they have two different natures, yes. it's still the same person. Do you not realize that? Okay. When you die, they do not say your kind nature died, or your angry nature died, okay. or your or, or your generous nature died. They say you, the person, dies. Are you with me? Yes. So from the whole idea, listen, the yes. whole idea of this incarnation and taking upon flesh is so that Jesus can die for all humanity. Yes. yes? The only way this person can die yes. is by changing his nature from divine to now divine and human. Are you with me? Okay, it's still on, the same yeah, person. It's still the same person. In the hypostatic union, who is the person? The second person of the Trinity. From the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, who died? That is the key question you need to answer. The second, the Son died in his humanity. Which person from the first, second and the third died? The Son. Which is which person? The second. Thank you. So one of them is a mortal. Not immortal, no, mortal. Because the nature, the divine nature didn't die. The flesh died. This the, flesh died. Exactly. the flesh died though. Listen, flesh listen, you, you, do you guys not understand that the nature wait, 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 is always linked to a person? Okay, We're dealing with spirit. Okay, wait, you can't, you wait, can't wait, use the same laws for spirit. Spirit is dead. You can't use the same laws for spirit. You have a body, you have a soul. When your body dies, does your soul die? No, no, exactly. Does it mean he's immortal? Wait a minute, does it mean he's immortal? Is his soul immortal? I didn't ask you his soul. This Is this person immortal? Is this? Is this person immortal? immortal. Yes, is if he? you come back to life, then he's no, immortal. No, you don't know what immortal it's, means. Then. Listen, my, brother, your soul, my friend, wait, immortal wait, means exempt from death. You know, you really, you really have to look up the word immortal. Immortal okay. doesn't mean that you won't be resurrected. Of course, everyone will be resurrected. Yes. But what does God say in 1 Timothy 6.16? Okay. He alone is immortal. Okay. Why no, does he use... No, but, but, you, no. but your understanding what? of immortal is, is flawed. How? You, because, How? Because you said immortal means you cannot be destroyed, right? Immortal means you cannot be destroyed. No, hold on. Oh, you, you, no, you I don't don't it means your life cannot end. No, 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 no. Timothy 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6